Hello guys, welcome to TV present, uh, Tech View present another episode. Uh, today I'll show you guys how you can build your own uh, home lab. So uh, I have three physical server and I have a plan actually. Um, each and every server I have like five or six uh, hard drive. So one of the hard drive I'll install, I'll dedicate it for install for um, SXI and one of the uh, hard drive and the other, other two or three, I, I make a partition, like a rate configuration. Through the rate configuration, I, I will create vSAN. And through the vSAN, uh, I will, I, I'll use vSAN as a share storage. And so uh, I'll create a vSAN, um, not only vSAN, I'll show you guys actually uh, how you can complete home lab. That means uh, enterprise level, enterprise level VMware environment. So it will have BSEN, it will have um, uh, iSCSI SEN, everything I'll show you guys, but for the iSCSI SEN, actually uh, the SEN storage is really, really expensive, but I'll show you as a demo, I'll show you actually uh, through one of the tools, which, uh, the tool's name is Starwing, through the Starwing I'll show you actually, but initially how you're gonna start it. So that's what I'm gonna show you practically, and we're gonna build our environment, but, in your case, if you don't have a three physical server, if you don't have a three physical server, how you can build your own home lab? So you, if you have only one physical server, that means on your one physical server, you're gonna do exactly, I have a, a structure I'll show you shortly. So just follow that structure. And in your case, maybe if you want to practice enterprise level, high available cluster, ESXi, home lab, in that case, you have to create some, um, um, what is called? Actually, um, so just give me one second. Let me show you. I have some videos and I can share with you guys. So let, let's share first, share my screen. Okay, so this is the structure. This is the structure we're gonna to build together. And on top of that, so actually you're gonna create a nested ESXi because you don't have physical server. So how are you gonna create a cluster? Cluster at this minimum, you have to have two ESXi server, but you have only one physical, how are you gonna make it? So one physical server, you're gonna build ESXi. Um, on top of that, you're gonna create a virtual machine and those virtual machines will be act as a ESXi host that call it nested because on top of the ESXi, if you install another ESXi, that call it nested. So you can create a nested ESXi environment, but nested concept is, you, you're never gonna see nested environment on uh, in enterprise level, but for practice, you can do that. So that's what I can, ex I'm, I, I'm going to explain here. So this is the structure I built for home lab. It's a home lab design, VMware home lab design. So, the first thing, whenever you have a one physical server, I have three, it's exception, like I have three, but it's not mandatory, you have to have three physical server. So you have one or three or four or 10 or 50 or thousand, it doesn't matter. The process is same for, if if you know one server, how you can configure the same process, you can apply for all others. So in here, what do you need actually? What do you need actually? So each and everybody, you have internet at your home, right? So you have inter your home router. So you need a switch. So the internet provider, they're gonna connect uh, internet connections to your router, right, directly. So from your router, you, you're gonna, you can see at, at your home router, you can have uh, maybe uh, uh, four ports. So one of the ports is blocked for um, maybe four or maybe two, it, 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 it depends on the uh, router. Um, it's not like fixed. So, the direct interconnection is connected in the one port and there is another four or two uh, LAN ports. So from the LAN ports, you have to take it, uh, take out the connections and connect it to the your switch. And from the switch, you can connect your server. You connect your server. So your, your server most probably will have five NIC card or maybe, maybe two NIC card. One NIC card is directly Representing IDRAC, if it is a H, uh, if it's a uh, Dell, then IDRAC, which is for remote management. So you can connect one 
internet uh, one uh, ethernet connections from your switch to your i your physical server i direct and rest of the uh, ports so it, it can be separate separate nic card or maybe one nic card can have four ports or maybe two nic card each nic card can have two ports it's 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 by the server design but anyway whenever you have a four ports so you can connect all four ports to your uh, with your switch like this so this is your physical connection so after that what are you going to do your ultimate goal is to install esxi right and if you have a one server that means you have only must one master esxi that's what i'm just going to show you it's number one that means you have to connect your i direct remote message if it is hp then it's going to be i low and number two rate so whenever you have all physical connections then you have to just um put the server you have to hook up a monitor or physical attached monitor because uh, you have first you need to configure the i direct whenever you are done with the i direct then you are done so i'll show you how actually you configure the i direct so your first job is configure the i direct so when you have the i direct then apply firmware make sure your firmware is up to date so i'll show you till how you're gonna configure the um uh your uh, i direct so this is my virtual okay it needs to be connect again okay i'm going to close it all right um so i have open already i because i have already configured but i'm going to show you so I, I'm able to connect remotely. My server is in my basement and I'm sitting on my third floor. So, uh, but I'm up, so I'm accessing this server remotely through the iDirect. So I, I just use iDirect IP address on my browser. But whenever you don't have any IP address, you didn't configure the IP address, how are you gonna log in there? So you have to physically, you have to be on site or maybe in front of your server, you have to have a monitor, then you have to reboot the server. That's what I'm doing right now. So this is the server I'm gonna monitor. So it's, I'm just launching the window. This is this is gonna be, this is my, uh, this one is my actually, um, okay. This is connecting, but it's, it's taking a little bit time because I it's already connected one time. That's why it's creating a problem. But if I close it and then if I relaunch it, so I know what my IP address I provide here as and so and root is the default username and password is a uh, Kelvin default one. But you can change it and enterprise level everybody change. Uh, username and password. So it, after you log in, you have options to change it. And also it's gonna see, it's, it's gonna offer you, like if you want, you can change it. So I don't want because it's a uh, demonstration. So that's why I'm keeping default one. So I, I choose keep default password and continue. Now, but whenever you're in front of the server, you just hook up a monitor with the server and then reboot the server. And when the, um, All right, so uh, I'm going to launch the monitor. This is the virtual monitor. It's launching right now. The session is this device already exists. Do you want to try it? Okay, but sometimes it makes some problem. It's fine. Um, maybe it will, it, it, will, it will take a little bit time because I open one time. That's why from my browser crash is creating issues. And if your browser, with like these kind of issues, maybe you can uh, or browse it from another uh, browser. That's not a problem. Okay, has been denied. Okay, it says denied. Don't worry. So I will restart the server now. How are you gonna restart the server? Power on and power off, right? Power cycle. Whole reboot. So you can use any one of the window, you can reboot it. But how are you gonna see it? But right, if I have a monitor in front of me, then I can see it, right? 
but my virtual monitor is not launching. And make sure when you launch it, make sure your settings is, uh, I'm going to show you the settings, HTML5, because by default it's native. So native, is, you cannot you cannot open it. Java is gonna create a problem. So all the time, it's HTML5 is pretty easy. You don't need to have any kind of tools or any kind of essence. So you can run it easily. So launch the virtual console. All right, so now I'm able to see. So configure memory is, is, is going to be open, but one thing you have to remember what you have to do first when you configure um, very quickly, it's gonna give you options F2, F10, F9, like this. So you have to remember, so you're going to configure. Now you're going to, your first target F2, system setup. You have to go to the F2. You have to go to the F2. So I, I, I hit F2. This is entering the system setup now, F2. Now it's not showing F2, it says entering the system because I already press F2 from my keyboard. So you have to press F2. You have to press F2 for setup what? iDRAC. So whenever you are done with the iDRAC, then you don't need to be sitting in front of your server. You can keep your server anywhere. You can put your server anywhere and you can browse um, your server to the iDRAC from anywhere, anywhere means, but you have to be a local. So where do you want to go? go? iDRAC settings, because first it targets to iDRAC, right? And then, then uh, network, and from the network, you see here, enable NIC is enabled, right? And go down, scroll down, scroll down, IPv4 settings. You have to go for IPv4 settings and I enable IPv4 is enabled. Enable DSCP is disabled. Previously, by, by default, DSCP will be enabled, but you have to make it disabled because you want to provide the static IP address. So that's what I assign. It, it depends on you what kind of IP network you have. Based on that IP network subnet, you're gonna provide the IP address. So and also you can create a spreadsheet like this. I created uh, because my IP address is 192.168.1.1. That's the default. And then I, I, I make a plan. So I'm gonna create, I, um, uh, I'm gonna create some uh, Active Directory domain controller. So that's what I reserve for these two here and DNS server separate, I reserve this IP. And for the um, iDirect, iDirect for my user host to one, user host two, three, so eight, nine, ten, I'm gonna be reserved for this. And for ESXi management, I'm gonna reserve this IP. And for iSCSI, I'm gonna I reserve this IP. And for Pmotion, I reserve this IP. So that's what you can do, same thing. Because you will have like most of the um, home network has um, um, class C network. So class C means you will have uh, 256 IPs. Actually, not 256, it's 254. So that's what I just designed here. You see here. So the last IP is for broadcast and the first IP is reserved for my default gateway. And rest of the IPs I can use for my server or my virtual machine. And also for the virtual machine name, I come up with a um, naming convention. So what, what does I mean with the name, naming convention? ELS, BP, W, B, A, A, D, D, C, 0, 1. So ELS means easily observations, B, P means virtual or physical, P, D, S, production, development, or staging. If it is a production, then I'm going to put P. If it is a development, then I'm going to put D instead of P. And W, L means Windows or Linux. If it is a Linux machine, I'm going to put L instead of W. And B, A, Virginia location, or maybe other location, whatever, you can put it here. It's up to you and up to your uh, company standard. Um, and also this is Active Directory, so AD and DC, this is domain controller, zero one. That's what I did. All right. Um, so you're gonna provide the uh, IP addresses and then whenever you're done, um, also your DNS server. So I provide my DNS server 168.1.2 and 1.1. Um, actually my DNS, my my plan, I, I will, I will, I will uh, change it later on because I have a plan to make a DNS server with IP number four and five, 
So I will change whenever, because right now I don't have this environment. Whenever I'll have this environment, then I'll come back and I, maybe I'll reboot and I will change this one again. So the DNS, but for the beginning, you can put well, your default gateway here is fine. It's gonna work, your default gateway, which is one. And you don't need to have actually uh, preferred and alternate both together. If you just have only preferred is fine. So you can put your uh, default gateway as a preferred. That's it, nothing else. And, and then you can go back and finish and you're done. You're done with that. Uh, IDA configuration. So whatever you're done, that means you are done from, you can just now come back from your, uh, you don't need to be sit in front of your server or you, you don't need any more the monitor because now you will be able to access it through that, um, uh, uh, to any workstation, like any computer, any index of a laptop, right? Just you need a browser, that's it. The way I am, the way I'm using right now. So finish. Now I'll show you if you say yes, okay. Now it's gonna be reboot it again. And now, and one more important thing, you have to configure. Um, I, uh, you have, now we are gonna configure um, RAID system, RAID, auto RAID. Now we're gonna configure a RAID system, hardware RAID, right? Okay, So it's just, um, so for the RAID, it's gonna show you the same thing, uh, black screen. And after black screen, it's gonna show you a lot of like white text here, but you have to carefully look at on the screen. Uh, it will instruct you to press control plus S for configuring the, um, conf conf configure the, uh, what is called, a RAID system. So see? Over here, C and is gonna within short time is gonna show you control C, control S, right? So control S, I press control S. Oh, oh. Sorry, not, not control S, control R. I have to reboot it again. Uh, how I can reboot it? Okay. But okay, I don't want it actually. I want to. They start it again. Control R, see here, Control R. I have to press Control R, Control R. So when you press Control R, it will take you to, uh, it will take you to the, it will take you to the um, rate configuration window. So right now I have a rate configured. Uh, I have to roll three partition here, uh, but I'm going to destroy everything now. How I can do that? So, I have to go to on the top and then hit enter. Uh, not sorry, not enter. In, 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 on the bottom, it has the instruction F2 operations. So if you hit F2, it's gonna give you clear the configuration because I have I have already the configuration. So clear the configuration. Okay. Then go to yes, yes. Now see, I have cleared everything. So I have a how many drive I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven drive I have on my this server. So if you have one or two or five, it's, it's up to you. But if you use only one server, in that case, I'll recommend you to do RAID zero because you need a hard disk space. You need a hard disk space. I will recommend you to uh, create RAID zero. But my, in my case, this demonstration I'll do, a uh, uh, different RAID system because I have three server, but you don't have three, right? You need a space, but I have three. I have a plan to create a sense, um, a B sense storage. So that's why I'll do different RAID system. But in your case, you're gonna do um, RAID zero. And also I'll show you actually, um, I have some video. If you go to the YouTube and search my channel, uh, EZTV, Enter and a T I O N L International and then hit enter. So and then you will you'll get um actually I have like it's my personal channel, that's why I have a lot of like uh other video too, like a social video and all the stuff. So but um I have some videos here step by step. Uh, if you go down, you're gonna see, you can see it. Um I have a complete video, VMware virtual send. 
So BM versus is a 30 minutes video. BSAN setup configuration by step by step. BSAN cluster configuration. This is the video you can watch. Plus, how um, and also I have another video. How to configure RAID on Dell PowerEdge. So if you watch this video, how to configure RAID, you will be able to see actually exactly what you need to do. And also, I have another video. I have another video which has a complete um, BSM cluster with nested ESX side. Uh, I'm going to find out for you guys here. So you see here is one hour, nine, uh, 19, almost one hour, 20 minutes. And BSEN and Nested SXI, complete BSEN cluster configuration with Nested SXI. So you should you should watch this video. Um, so then you can create your own um, home lab. And also I have a separate video just only for Nested SXI, how you can install Nested SXI. So these three video I'll recommend you to watch ESXi or maybe this this one you'll get in here. So this is the complete video. So you can watch this one and also you can watch for RAID system. And also I have a video actually how you can apply the firmware update. So I'm not going to show you how, I'll show you a little bit about the firmware update, but um, I will recommend you watch my video to how to see new way March, 2022 to update Dell PowerEdge server firmware. So they'll change their process to how you can apply the firmware on March, 2022. That's why I created, I have two videos. Actually, I have the old system and also this is the new system, how new way, how you can uh, apply the firmware update on the Dell uh, server. So that's what I explained here. So you should watch this video if you want to do firmware update. But I'll show you in this video a little bit. Um, so I'm going here. So now um, I break down everything. So I need, it says, see here, it says in, um, uh, unconfigured. So what are you gonna do? If you want to do the configuration, just up, go up here and then F2 and then create a new BD virtual desk, right? Hit enter. And then you're gonna see here red zero on the top. If you hit enter, you don't see red zero, red one. I have all those options because I have a lot of hard drives. That's why it's give me up to rate 50. But if you don't have that many uh, hard drive, maybe you're not gonna get all those. Maybe you can get up to rate five or rate one or rate zero. So I'll recommend you, whenever you have only one server, just make a rate zero. But remember one thing, in reality, and the real fair and enterprise level, nobody do rate zero, nobody do rate zero. Most of the case, most of the reason they do rate five or rate six or rate 10. It depends on what kind of application, what kind of service for, that's what. But in my case, I'm do, I'm gonna do different, different types of RAID system. So RAID zero, I'm gonna create one RAID zero, but which one? I'm gonna select only the one, one drive, the first one. It has 136, I'm gonna install only the ESXi on this drive. But for, for the ESXi, remember ESXi, you, you don't need that much storage space. ESXi consume only four gigabyte of uh, four gigabyte of space. And maximum you can have like 10 gigabyte. 10 gigabyte is enough. But I have 136, one drive, I can keep it because I cannot make it more small. Um, so I'm dedicatedly use this drive for installing um, ESXi. Now, just go, go to the, tab here and you can name it, okay, I can say ESXi. This one I reserve for ESXi, right? And tab and go, okay, and yes, okay. All right, so one drive is already configured. Now go back here, hit enter and then read. So in your case, what are you gonna do? You do wanna do all read, read right, read zero, right? So you're gonna do like, 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 blah, 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 boom, like this. But so it's gonna be at all together here, all together here. That's what you're gonna do. And why are you gonna do red zero? Because you need a storage and I explain everything on my um, BSN complete cluster system uh, Nestle SXI video. So you can get it from there. But I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. So, 
So for vSIM, you need two drive, actually. Minimum two drive you need for cash tier and capacity tier. So cash tier, you don't need that much space. So my minimum hard drive is right now 558. That's why I'm keeping one drive for cash. But if I have lower than like the lower space than 558, then I'll keep that one, but I don't have it. That's why I'm dedicating the, this drive for my cash tier. So cash tier. Okay, and press. The reason I'm, I, you, you can do it on the nested ESX side. You can do the same thing on the nested ESX side, but I'm doing here because I have three server, three physical server, and I have plenty of space, plenty of storage, like a, a, a hard disk. So, so far I created two, RAID zero, and the last one for the capacity. Actually capacity here is the actual storage for you. BMR resource, BMR storage resource. So that's what I'm going to do. And hit enter again. And then in here, what I'm gonna do, I will create a RAID 5. So if I do the RAID 5, how much space I will get it? I'll do RAID 5, and then I'm gonna select this, 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 this. So I'm getting 200, uh, how much? Almost more than two terabyte, right? 2,233 gigabyte, that means it's more than um, two gigabyte, uh, two terabyte. So if now I want to just show you guys, if I go for red six, what gonna be happen? Red six. So red six. So red six, I'm getting less, less storage. See, it's 1600, that means 1 1.6 terabyte. But red six has uh, more, um, Redundancy map that means you will have two mirroring, but rate five will have one mirroring. One mirroring is one oh, sorry, one drive fail. Uh, fault sorry, fault tolerance. Rate five, you have one drive fault tolerance, and rate six will have two drive fault tolerance. So your fault tolerance will be increased if you go for rate six, but you lose the storage. But I need storage space. That's why I'm going for rate five because it's not that much important. It's my lab. I can go for. Red five. Okay. I have I'll have and what what is the red five or the red two? I have a separate video. Please watch that video. I'm not spending too much time for here. And this is it. Uh capacity here. Capacity. And then okay. And from here. Okay. All right. So uh rate configuration is done for my side from my side. And I'm going to hit escape button because I'm done from here. Escape. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes, I, I want. Now, this is control alter delete to reboot. So I don't have, I cannot do it from here because I'm running from my laptop. So I, I'm gonna open like this one. Uh, control alter and delete. All right, this rebooting. Now, but before it's reboot, I want to show one thing. I'm going to connect virtual media because I have, I, uh, my plan is to install, my plan is to install uh, ESXi. So I have I have already downloaded Dell Customize ESXi and I put it on my desktop. I have on my desktop, uh, I'll show you here shortly. Beamer, see here, 6.7 Dell Customize ESXi. I'm going to select this one and map the drive and then close it. So I mapped it, so it's, it's already mapped. So BIOS boot manager F11, you can press F11 if you want. So I put enter BIOS boot manager, already centering F11. I want to boot it from my CD. So it, it, will, it will take to me uh, to the uh, BIOS boot. But one thing, for you, uh, for you guys, um, update the BIOS. So what the update the BIOS? The same thing, the same way. For the BIOS, you have to have a uh, Dell firmware ISO file. And how you get it, actually. So there is a way. 
That's why I said I have a video, complete video, how you can install it. Um, so you just need to watch this video. I'm going to show you here again. This is the video you need to watch. This is the video you need to watch, which is this one. New way, March 2022 to upgrade Dell PowerEdge server firmware. So you're gonna get a, a you're gonna get all the information how you apply the firmware. So I would recommend before you install ESXi, you should go for um, firmware update. So it will take a little bit of time, you have to wait. So I will make a series of video. This one will be the first series. So maybe I cannot finish everything because I have a big plan. So I'm just following uh, this structure. So, so far I show you guys how you can configure the hydrate, how you can configure the RAID, and then ESX installation. And then on top, after I'm done with this, uh i'll be i'll create a i'll create a virtual machine but for creating a virtual machine uh you need a space but i don't have a space because my all the other space uh, i am i have a plan to make a uh, vsin but maybe vsin i'm not going to create today uh but before i make the vsin cluster um i'll do one thing what i'm going to do i'll i'll build a uh, active directory and also active directory, uh, uh, active directory DC01, and then this is number four, right? Number five is DNS. I build another machine, Windows machine for DNS. And then what is the number six? Number six is jump machine. I'll create another machine for jump machine. And what is the number seven? What is the number seven? Number seven is, this is number two. And number eight, what is the number eight? Where's number eight? Number eight is genius number two. And then I will build B center number nine. But uh, I'll do slightly change this number sequence because I have a plan to make all the servers on my BSEN. So BSEN cluster, actually I wanna build after I build my BM, B, uh, uh, B center. So first I need to have this two BM. At least I have an active directory, one machine, and then at least B center. And if I have a B center, then I can add all three SXI and I can create a cluster. Because whenever I have a B center, I can create a cluster, right? And on the on top of the cluster, I can create on the cluster, I can create what? Um create a B -SIN. And then I will have a share storage. But before that, how I can create this how, because I don't on, on my SXI, I don't have enough space. I have 135. So ESXi is gonna be take at least 10 gigabyte. I need to be reserved for that. And rest space, I can maybe use local storage to build this one. One of the ESXi host, I, I'm gonna build this one. Another ESXi host, I'm gonna build this one. Or maybe I can add a, um, a NAS storage. But NAS storage is really slow, really, really slow. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you because that's how you can learn actually how you can add a NAS storage. So maybe I can build all, these two machine on the NAS storage. And whenever I will have uh, um, decent storage, then I will um, migrate that storage from NAS storage to my decent storage. So this, I need active directory. The reason is I have to have a fully qualified domain name for vCenter. That's why I need active fast domain controller. Whenever I have a fast domain controller, then easily I can build this. So maybe I can do uh, DC and DNS first, these two. First, and then third number, I will be this one. And then fourth, this, fifth, this. Or I can follow this same sequence. Each and every SXI I will have, I can make at least two, three BM. 
And also one of the machine or maybe business I can build on uh, NAS storage. Okay, let's see actually what's going on this one. Okay, so it's booted up and it says BIOS boot menu. So all the time, don't go with the UEFI boot menu because ESX is not support UEFI boot menu. For the ESX, you have to go to the BIOS boot menu. So click here, BIOS boot menu, then it's gonna be scan and it will give you the options. So see here, uh, virtual media connect device map one BMR BSPR, the one I connected with my virtual device, if you guys can remember virtual media. So that's what it's showing here. So I'm going to go down and select my virtual CD and hit enter. When you hit enter, it's gonna redirect to your virtual CD. And you see here, it's a Dell customized ESXi, hit enter. Now it's loading. So now, my ISO file is on my um, laptop. So from my laptop, I was running through the Wi-Fi connection. So Wi-Fi connection through to go to the, to like is, is now the instruction file is going through my Wi-Fi connection. That's why it's, it's a little bit slow. But if you have a physical connection with your laptop, this process will more, work more faster than this. So it's now loading. All right, so uh, this one actually, I'm I, I'm just trying to show you guys it's a how you would install uh, ESX on a physical machine, but uh, I'm not gonna wait for this because I'll show you why uh, these steps side by side. Uh, in the meantime, because it's going, it's taking time. In the meantime, I can show you guys something else, which is I have already, I have already other two uh, a physical machine. I have already installed um, ESXi. If I show you this one, you see here, ELS host 02, it has an IP address and everything is ready. So whenever you have an IP address and everything is ready, um, and based on my, based on this, so this host 11, host number one, ELS host 01 and ELS host 02, both are ready. So now I, I need a um, Active Directory machine because if I have activity machine, then I can create DNS entry uh, for other machines. So I need at least one active directory machine and one uh, DNS machine. So I'm going to create, um, before I create this, I will show you guys actually how you can add a, a NAS storage, right? So um, if you have a, a, a vCenter server, and if you have all um, all ESX hosts connected on the business server, it's pretty easy. If you connect, um, um, if it is in another cluster, so if you uh, add or share storage with one and rest of the server, you just need to just say apply. It's, it's pretty easy way. But when, if you, now I don't have any vCenter, I have to log in each and every individual ESX separately, right? So I have to type the IP address of the ESX host. So my first ESX host IP address, uh, 192.168.11, oh, sorry, dot one dot eleven. And the other host is still, instruction process is in, in progress, right? So we're gonna come back here later on. And I, I'm showing you which one is already done. Root and password. All right. So I don't have any machine right now, okay. All right, so I have already built two machine here, which is wonderful. I have a jump machine and I have a nest storage already attached here. Actually, previously I did it. That's why I have it. But I, anyway, I'll show you the process actually how you can add the nest storage. I have nest 01, I can add nest 02. Um, so I have actually, I have actually, 
uh, uh, my WD Cloud storage. I can log in there. Log in. If I go to the share file, e storage. Uh, NFS zero. So this one I already added. So how I create this one? I just create here plus sign, and then I provide the name, and all those are going to be off. This one will be off. Just only NFS access is going to be on, and admin has the access here. Read and write both, and also here, post. I put it start. That means all kind of post can be used and write is on. So that's what you have to do. So if you if I want another storage here, I can create like this. Share name is say NAS02 or NFS02, whatever you want. It's just a name, nothing else. So I have created this one. Now is you have to turn off this. You have to turn on this. And on the configuration, you can start and on this and apply. So you have a link here. See here? You have a link, right? This. Just copy this, copy, and I'm just trying to show you guys actually how you can add it on your ESX post. So on the storage side, if you want to add any kind of NAS storage or uh, NFS storage, you can right click on it and go for new data store and mount NFS data store, click next, and provide the name. You can say NAS02, well, it, name doesn't matter, it keep up, up to you, uh, NFS server. So the NFS server IP address. NFS server is NFS server IP address. So I'm going to delay all those path, just IP address and share name. So share name is actually, this is the share name. This is the share name, NFS NAS2, right? And it's, uh, the, the device I have is support NFS version NFS3. Click next and finish. See here, now I have that's two storage. That's how that, that's how you can add the share storage. Okay, so I have a share storage and I build this machine uh, and I provide the machine name. Uh, how I create a virtual machine is pretty simple. So now I want to show you actually how I uh, you can create a virtual machine. Uh, those virtual machine I think is created on. Uh, let's see which share storage I use. Storage disk. Okay, so this is a jump machine. Uh, right click on it, edit settings. Add this. So I took from NAS01, see here? So I put the disk space on my NFS or NAS storage. So this one, I believe I did the same thing. In provision, but this one I, I ran directly. I ran it directly on from the local storage. Uh, but later on, whenever I have um, BSEN storage, I'll migrate the story of uh, the disk drive to migrate the disk drive uh, storage from uh, local source to my BSEN later on. But right now, I don't have the system yet. That's why I temporarily I put it there. So, and now I, I'm going to log in my second one, 192.168.1.12. This is my second, second one. And root and the password. I'm not telling you guys my password, right? <laughs> okay. So this machine has a template. So I build another machine here. And I have a plan. Later on, I'll build this one as a template. This one is a template. So, um, so from there, I can build more machine. And this machine I built actually from this machine I built. Okay, let's see which storage I use. Disk, so I use NAS one, NAS. Okay, 
no issues. This one has, this machine has also the NAS storage, the same storage, if you see near zero one. Now, um, see here the type is BMFS6, data store type. This is a BMR virtual machine uh, disk type, BMFS6. I have a 24 gig of free space. All right. Um, now go back to the one we are working on it. So see, so everything is loaded. Now it says hit enter to continue, hit enter. So in ASX instruction, it's pretty simple, pretty simple. And F11, because all the instruction is there, you just need to read it. F11 for accept, F11. I'm not wasting the time, that's why I'm doing the multitasking because I have already built two ESXi and this one is we are building now. So see here, based on my partitions, it shows 136, 558, this is rate zero, this is rate zero, and this one is rate five, right? Which is give me 2.18 terabyte of space. So um, for a ESX installation, I'm using this disk drive. And by default is selected, which is yellow. But if you want to do some in some other drive, you can just change it with your uh, keyboard down arrow or up arrow. So uh, I'm going to install the from the first one because that's what my target, right? So hit enter, enter the continue. See in here, here's the instruction, enter for continue. And it's now scanning. By the way, 6.7 is already end of life. Okay, so it says upgrade. The reason is, this machine, I uh, previously I installed the ESXi 6.7. That's what it's found. But I'm not actually upgrading. I'm going to select this one, install. I want to do the fresh installation because I'm showing you guys. That's the way. So it's going to show you default, US default, select, and then root, pass, uh, root password. You have to provide the root password. up to you with enter all right f11 is for installation so i hit f11 and it's not going to take that long but in my case maybe it's not going to take that long okay i'm going back to here again so now i am going to create a machine so which is i need uh, i said i'm going to build two machine right um, based on my this, I already created this machine. Now I'm going to create for DNS and jump machine already created. And I have it, um, template machine, but I need this machine actually. This machine is necessary for me right now. Um, because I need to create a DNS. So what I need to do, I'm going to right click on it and it's a create a new VM. Click next. And uh, name. So I already choose the name. What should be my machine name? Okay, this one. So I'm just copy this one. I have a naming standard, naming convention standard based on this. Uh, I'm just going to provide the name here, paste it here. And compatibility is ESXA 6.7 because uh, now I'm, 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 I'm sitting on the ESXA 6.7. That's what it's showing. And guess to his family, what kind of operating system I'm going to install? It's Windows. And which version? So I'm going to install 2019, but in here, uh, it says 2016 or later. That means it's covered 2019. And click next. And then where are I going to actually create the uh, this virtual machine disk? C drive or E drive, whatever the drive you want. So. Uh, first time I just need only um, only one drive is fine. So I'm going to select NAS storage. This one temporarily. Later on maybe I will migrate the storage. Click next. And in here, CPU. I'm going to assign four CPU. And one thing most of the BMR engineer make mistake, which is when they select the core. So you can if you say four or if you say one, 
that means socket is four. But in your physical machine, if you doesn't have four um, CPU socket, then how are you gonna provide? Is this a wrong configuration? I'm I'm uh, I'm indicating this one. If you go to the host, um, this host is what it shows. Socket. See here, CPU socket is two. My physical machine has only four, two socket. So if I do the configuration like this, four socket is the wrong configuration. You cannot go over four socket. And make sure you enable this one because later on, whenever your machine is running, in the meantime, if you need to increase your CPU, you can uh, increase on the fly. You don't need to power up the machine. If you have this one uh, check mark, very important. And memory. So I'm going to assign actually at the by the gigabyte I got one uh, eight GB of uh, memory and hard disk I'm going to provide eighty gig of hard disk and make sure it's thin provision. Most of the time it's by default because this is the mass storage that's why it's thin provision. But if it is other storage or local storage by default it's going to be thick provision. Don't use thick provision. If your application demand thick provision, in that case, do the thick provision, otherwise use thin provision. Um, you, you, you will get this explanation on my, I have another video, uh, how to create a virtual machine in my channel. If, um, how to create a virtual machine. Don't, uh, don't make the common mistake that most system admin do. So watch this video, how to create a virtual machine, then you will get everything. All right, and then network, I, I uh, one network is fine. And network adapter actually is one gig adapter. If you were to change it to BMX net three, that is 10 gig, it's up to you. Because uh, if you have a 10 gig network card in your physical machine, then you can use 10 gig. But right now I'm, I'm not using 10 gig because my physical machine has only one gig. And uh, CD-ROM. So I want to install uh, uh, Windows 2019. So I have to go to for data store ISO because I have already uploaded on the NAS storage. I have already uploaded the ISO file. I have 2019 ISO file here. See here, 2019. So I'm going to select this one and select. Do I have any more 2019? No, I don't have, okay. And make sure you have check mark connected. Also, you have check mark on connected power on. That's it. That's all. And but one thing, just remember from the BM option, make sure um, boot option. This is UFA, right? So BIOS change to BIOS and um, BM tools. Check mark on this and click next and finish. So I have just created a virtual machine here. Machine is just, I have created only the virtual machine, but Windows is not installed yet. So how are you gonna install it? Select this machine and say power on. So, and then open, click here, and then you're gonna open window. So it's loading the file. Now I'm going back to our ESX installation. So ESX installation is done. So it says remove the installation media before reboot. What does it mean? If you don't remove this media, virtually I connected ISO file, right? ESX ISO file. If you don't remove it, and if whenever the machine is re rebooted, machine gonna think you are again trying to install the ESX file. That's why it's very important. Before you reboot it, make sure you disconnect this one. So how you do that? Virtual media, and you can say disconnect virtual media. Yes. I hit enter. Now it's going to reboot it. So after reboot is going to be load SXI here. And I'm going to minimize this window again. And now I'm come back to how to install virtual machine. So click next. Install. So I will name it this video, uh, BMR Home Lab part one, BMR Home Lab part two, part three, part four. So I'm gonna 
uh, make uh, some series and I'll follow this lab design. So now we are here, we already built this, we are building this, and then we're gonna, uh, also we have jump machine, and then we're gonna build this. All right, so for BM installation, Windows 20 in server, standard, and uh, 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 make sure you select desktop experience, standard or data center, anyone. So I'm going to select this one, standard desktop experience. Click next. Accept the terms license, click next. And go to the second option, custom install Windows, advanced and it shows the hard drive, click new and apply the whole space, yes. And if you want, if you want, you can format it now or also, Whenever you say next and you're going to install the uh, Windows operating system, that time it will automatically format it. But anyway, you can do now or you can do it with the, uh, when you install the operating system. That will, uh, operating system will clean, clean it up, make a condition, uh, format. Okay, so format is done. Now click next. Now installation process is going on. You have to wait a little bit. Um, in the meantime, you can see actually while we are for this one, okay, it's still it's still loading because it's a physical server. It's going to take a little bit time. All right, so um, yes, exercise is loaded. So now we need to see here. It has a uh, DHCP IP address, but I we need to uh, provide the static IP address, which is based on our plan, which is going to be thirteen, right? Uh, and host name should be this one, ELS host 03, this ELS host 03. So I'm going to configure this one now. So what you have to do, you have to press F2 for customize and then password. And then shortly, it's going to come like this. Okay, configure the password. If you want to change the password, you can change the password from here. Configure management network, hit enter. Network adapter, which is the first one is selected. If you want to have a redundant, you can select like this. So two unique card you can use for uh, management. If one goes down, then another one will be active. That's why everybody do two. But I have a limited net card. That's why I'm just adding one, but all four is connected and hit enter. And then VLAN option. So VLAN usually yeah, you can provide an VLAN ID or you can, if you want to use, uh, provide access for all VLANs, you don't know like on the network side, how many VLANs you have to handle with this ESX, you don't know yet. So it's better to have this one. So VMware already recommended 4095 to access all VLANs. So provide four zero nine five to have access all billions. And then I give you four configuration. And I'm going to use, by default is using DSCP, right? Dynamic IP before, but I'm not using dynamic. I'm going to select this one and then still bar, select it. And then now I have options. It's gonna be 13, right? And rest of the things is okay. And hit enter and uh, I'm not using IPv6 space bar, then disable selected and hit enter. Now DNS. DNS. DNS is the main thing actually. You get this one and uh, primary DNS server. Actually, my plan wise, it should be the primary DNS should be four and secondary DNS should be five. So I can use it right now or later on. I'm going to put it here right now. Oh, sorry, 192.168.1.4. And secondary one, this is my plan actually. This DNS server is not exist now, it exists yet, right? 192.168.1.5. And hostname, what's the, what's the host name I selected here? Um, this will be the host name. ELS host 03. 
So ELS post zero three. Hit enter and then custom names prefix. The domain name. So my domain name is not the the, uh, the activity domain is not exist yet, but I have a plan to have this one. So the ELS.com. So based on my plan, I like I entered this one and all the configuration is done, then hit escape button and then say yes. Whenever you press yes, it's gonna be reboot again. Yes. So ESXi configuration is done. Now I have three ESXi. And let me check the virtual machine which I built. Okay, this virtual machine is also done. And now I'm going back to this one. Oh, it's already. Uh, My first is excited. So I don't have vCenter, that's why I'm logging individually um, SXI one, two, like this. If I have a 50 SXI, I have to open five tab like this and I have to use uh, SX IP address. And sometimes, okay, sometimes if you say it's already um, timeout and you're trying to log in again, it's taking a long time. I'll recommend you to close this session and open a new session. So then it will work faster. Okay. So in this one, I'm going to, this is one of the machine I built it previously. So if I go action, then I can see here, if I go to the guest OS, see here BMR, the first option is you have to, after you install the uh, Windows operating system, then you have to go for uh, this one. Uh, install BMR tools. It is this will be your first task because without BMR tools, you cannot maybe your network not gonna be work and virtual network because it's a virtual network, right? It's not gonna be work and uh, maybe that you will face some other problem, which is um, uh, your mouse movement is not gonna be smooth. So that's what you have to do. But I already did. I just click like this. Uh, install uh, install BMR tools. Then it goes to the C drive. Ah, sorry, we have uh, CD drive, and then I go send keys, and then go control or delete, and then I logged in. Okay, so that's actually I logged in there. Now, if I make it big screen, so, and then. When you have a Windows machine, your first task is to install the BMR tools, which I already did. How are you gonna install it? You have to go to the folder option, uh, this one, your file explorer, and then from there, you have to go to this computer, and then you're gonna see here, there will be uh, like a DVD ROM mounted for uh, BMR tools, but I don't have it right now here because I'll install it. I'll show you on the other machine, which one we just built it, right? We, I'll show you it there. And Whenever you have this, it, then after you install the Bima tools, it, it, it will recommend you to reboot the machine. But before you reboot it, you need to do some other things, which is you have to assign the IP address, which I already did. You just need to click here on the local server. If you, by default, it's gonna be dashboard, but if you go to the local server, you're gonna have all this information here. So your second option, first is install Bima tools. Second option is assign an IP address, double click on it, go to the properties, and then, Turn off IPv6 because we are not working with IPv6. We are working with IPv4. Double click on it and then uh, use the following IP address. Provide the, based on your plan, provide the IP address and DNS server. Right now, I assign DNS server is two and two, and alternate DNS is one, which is my default gateway. The reason is actually I have a plan. I have a plan to have different uh, DNS server with IPv IP number four, but my dad. DNS server is not exist yet. That's why I'm using itself, the server IP, the active directory domain controller IP, which is number two based on my plan. And I assign that IP as a, my preferred DNS and alternate, I am using my default gateway. So whenever I will have the actual DNS server there, that time I'll change this one. I'll change this IP. Now it's okay. Okay. That's what you want to do. And then, Remote desktop needs to be enabled. It was by default it was disabled. You have to be enable it. And Windows firewall, turn off the firewall. 
a turn off the firewall is not a good idea, but the reason I'm telling you to domain network, private network, everything turn off because it's gonna make a problem whenever you do some other stuff, remotely access the machine. So whenever you have done everything, later on, whenever you have Active Directory, you can apply the GPU policy through the GPU policy, you can enable the firewall, but right now you don't need to enable the firewall. And then change the machine computer name based on your, uh, this is the actual name actually. So when you build, uh, provide a machine name on when you create a virtual machine, that not actual virtual machine name. That's a virtual machine name, which is your VMware inventory name, your VMware inventory name. But this is the actual name, computer name. So you have to change this one, or click here, change, and you have to provide a name. So I already provided the name. Then whenever you provide this, then it will recommend you again to reboot it. Okay, before you do that, do one more thing, which is time zone. Make sure whatever the time zone you belongs to, just change this time, you, you uh, set your time zone here, and then change this one. And after you change this one, then it will recommend reboot. So you have another pending reboot, like when you install the VMR tools, right? So this one, another, this is the second one, second time it's gonna recommend you to reboot. So after you've done this one, reboot it, then you'll get a complete server. So and now this machine is complete, ready to do anything. So what I do need to do, I have to, I, my plan is to install Active Directory here. So um, this is, uh, that's all for today here. Um, okay, let me exit from here. So I have now three hosts, three SXA hosts. Um, let me see where I am for this one. Okay, this one is already loaded. I can test it from here actually. Uh, if I go my ESXA, where is my ESXA? Here. Overview, if you go to overview, this is the uh, IDRA console, right? From the IDRA console, so I, I will be able to see actually uh, what's the status of this machine right now. So I have all three, see, it's loading, it's still loading. Still is loading. It's not done yet. Um, okay, it's done, 13, it's loaded. Now you can close this monitor, you don't need this. And now you can try to log in there. 192.168.1. A team, which one we just install and configure, right? So we successfully configured physical machine as ESXi host and all right, we logged in. So first time when you logged in, it's gonna show you this one. Never ever go with, okay. Just uncheck it, then go say okay. All right, so it's it's a uh, temporary license. I have to I have to provide the license. I'll do it later on. And it's a customized SXI, Dell customized. So storage is my local storage right now. It has so I, if I want, I can add the uh, share storage here. All right. See here I have provision. I just install ESXi. This is a good idea to check it. The reason is I install um, the total capacity, total capacity of storage is 125.5 gig, right? So out of 128.5 uh, gig, I just install uh, ESXi on this storage, right? So how much space ESXi took? 1.41 gigabyte only, 1.41 gigabyte only. And 127 gigabyte is free. So for your ESX installation, you don't need that much storage. It's just consume 1.4, maybe later on it's gonna consume more, little bit more, but um, total 10 gigabyte, max 10 gigabyte is enough for ESX side. All right, that's all for today. And uh, this is the part one for installing ESXi in a physical machine and I install on three ESXi. And also I build some virtual machine. And later on, I will show you guys actually how to, uh, the second video, the part two, 
how to install Active Directory, how to install uh, uh, and install and configure Active Directory, and then first domain controller. And then second is D, uh, DNS server, DNS server. And DNS server will be maybe Active Directory and DNS I wanna make in the same video. And third video for vCenter server. And after vCenter server, I will add all three SXI in the same vCenter. And then I'll create a cluster and so I'll show you how to create a cluster, how to create a high availability, and also I'll create a basin. Till then, stay safe. And if you like my video, please give a big thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe my channel if you are new in my channel. Um, and also click the bell icon to get my uh, next video notification. Th thank you. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching my videos.